Now, the presence has always been. The presence has always been in us. But I know how it works is that we get busy living life and we lose sight of that. That presence is within us. And we start to suffer. And we suffer and suffer and suffer until it gets really, really bad. And then we say, oh, God, help. Now, the good thing about that is that at least it turns us to the presence, right? At least it gets our attention. Because it can be a good thing because we can choose to say, you know, what have I got to do differently? I want to wake up here, right? So we turn to that presence that is life itself. Now, it's everywhere, even in the midst of our condition, even in the midst of that crazy boss we have, even in the midst of that neighbor who sends us through the roof, even in the midst of that person we live with, or whatever it is, right? Even in the midst of condition, whatever the condition is, that presence is there. So St. Paul said, we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We can go from living with an all-consuming error, you know what I mean, you know how when you have one that's something going on that's all-consuming, it's all you can think about, and you just chew on it and chew on it and chew on it, really like a dog with a big brontosaurus bone. <laughs> you know, you just keep chewing on it and chewing. You think, oh, no, I've got to let this go. I've got to let this go. And you do for about a split second. And then you start chewing on it again. So we can go from that kind of all-consuming error to living in the divine presence. And what it is, is it's what A Course in Miracles calls a holy instant, where we go from the dark to the light, where we go from being consumed with error to now thinking a spiritual truth, from being in hell to being in heaven, from limitation to freedom. We've all had it happen, you know, something like this, where you're busy at home and there's a knock on the door, and it happens at the most inconvenient time. You know, you're on the phone, you're dripping wet with a towel on you, and someone is at the door. You know, and so you kind of make your way to the door, you know, because you're hoping to say, you know, gee, maybe they won't know. But they keep knocking, and they keep ringing, right? You know, and you're like, oh, I'm so busy. I don't need another interruption right now. And you open the door, and it's someone you haven't seen in a long time who you really love, you know? And so you go from complete agitation and irritation to like, oh, how wonderful to see you. Just let me dry off. I'll be right back, you know? <laughs> Right? Or, or it's, uh, the one that happens for me recently is being, you know, oh my God, I go to the door and it's my neighbor with a package that I've been waiting for and it was delivered to them. You know, so they went from being this interruption to being the bearer of, of great news, right? And so it can change like that. In a holy instant, it all changes that you're suddenly happy to see them. For, we go from reaction uh, to love and joy. You know, in the moment we enter the presence, we enter the goodness of God. We go from separation, boom, right to joy. You know, usually we think, if I understand this person, this person who I have become an expert at judging and criticizing everything about them, if I understood this person better, well, I suppose eventually over time, lifetimes perhaps, I might be able to love them. That's not the way it works, okay? That's not the way it works. That's like saying to the fireplace, give me some heat and I will give you some wood. Yeah, it doesn't work that way, does it? That has never been a successful strategy. The way it works is if you love them, you will understand them. And that's what happens again and again. I have to be the one who is willing to give love first in order to be healed. And you say, well, why do I have to be the one? Because you want to be healed. Well, why is it always me? Because your life sucks. And you want it to be better. <laughs> you know, keep doing what you're doing and you're going to keep getting what you've gotten. Right? So I've had this experience so many times where I'll be in line at the grocery store. Why is it so much transformation happens for me at the grocery store? <laughs> Probably because it's in my DNA that I have to go to a grocery store every 24 to 36 hours or I start getting really kind of jiggy, you know? Sometimes I don't even have to shop. I just go in and face a couple of shelves. That's all I need, and I get all calmed down, you know? But I will be in line at the grocery store and just judging like crazy on the inside. My mind is just like working for a black belt. It's just going. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy on the inside. Impatient, impatient, impatient. And after a while, I sort of come to that place of, oh, God, help me. God, I am willing to see this differently. That's the key right there. 
Uh, God, help me. I am willing to see this differently. 